Shalom, everybody. I'm going to start with prayer. Apologies for the late start today. Um, Father, we just ask for you to forgive us of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. Father, we thank you for this day. Um, thank you for life and life more abundantly, Father. Um, we thank you for waking us up um, at a time like this, Father. Um, we just ask for you to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to make our hearts pure, Father, so that we are not partakers in our plagues, Father. All these things we do ask and pray in the name of your beloved son, Yahusha Hamashiach. Amen. So, um, I was going to continue with Moses. Um, you know, certain things from back then, how they kind of parallel with what's going on today. But uh, it was kind of impressed upon me earlier today, and then I had a confirmation uh, when I talked with my Ema, my, mo my mother. And um, today's really about pride. Um, that's why this is titled The Purge is Near. Um, it has everything to do with pride. Everything from the initial fall to almost every captivity that we've gone into has had to deal with pride. Um, before we get into that, uh, we have the Feast of Trumpets coming up on the, the 17th. We're going to start at 6 o'clock. So I'm going to get with um, everyone that's going to be there so we can all bring stuff to it. Um, because we have to start understanding what each of these feast days represent. They're not just meals that we just come and eat and fellowship with. They all have a symbolic meaning. You're supposed to be taking something from that. Um, especially when it comes to the Feast of Trumpets, you know, the last trump, you know, that has to do with your salvation. Um, and the thing about the Feast of Trumpets is it leads you to the Day of Atonement. It's 10 days of afflicting your soul. Now, you don't have to necessarily fast in that whole time frame at all, except for on the Day of Atonement. But you're supposed to be getting yourself right, purging your heart. Um, so that you can be made pure. Um, so that you can be worthy of the Ga'al, the kinsman redeemer that's coming. Um, for you. Because it's all about the blood. And this is a, a serious time that we're going into. Um, it's really kind of crazy when you think about it. How the fall feasts have to do with the, <laughs> the election time periods and time frames and um, nations being exalted and nations coming down or falling and don't get it twisted North America or the United States as you know it is falling you're seeing it fall so don't fall for the okie doke don't think that whoever is elected uh, El Presidente is going to save you from the tribulations that's coming upon this world so you give me some water um now we're going to get into one article uh, for World News. So again, this is titled, The Purge is Near. Um, has to do with California. It says, it's the first in the nation reparations bills are headed to Newsom's desk, but not without tension. So I don't know if y'all have been keeping up with it, if y'all are aware of what's going on, but California has been desperately trying to get um, reparations. When I say California, I'm talking about the, the people. Certain groups of people are trying to get reparations from slavery. So as we uh, read this article, it says, it's a hot morning on the Capitol lawn just days after the end, thank you, uh, of the legislative session. And several advocacy groups that represent people who have been incarcerated are kicking off their next big push. A campaign for a November ballot measure. Slavery is inconsistent with California values. Carmen Nicole Cox with the ACLU California Action said to the crowd from a podium. And even still, slavery is alive and well in detention and penal faculty uh, facilities 
across our great state. So now they're admitting that the privatized uh, prison system is slavery under another name. Um, she was speaking at a rally in favor of Proposition 6, which would end forced labor in state prisons. Uh, it was part of a successful suite of reparations bills. So the state of California is trying to correct that because how do you claim that you're bringing people to a rehabilitation center, but then they become a felon or whatever, and then when they get out, they can't get jobs, they can't get employment, um, they can't, a lot of times they can't go to college. Um, it's really a foolproof system to keep you in the system, to keep you institutionalized. Two failed bills that would have helped advance the state's reparations plan are also grabbing attention. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And Cox said voters are watching. The world is watching. Because remember, this is about pride. We're going to go over some scripts about uh, the pitfalls of pride. Um, as we continue, it says, we absolute, absolutely vote people in because we believe that they are going to advance certain policy. And then when they show us that they won't, we get to vote again, she said. So, I mean, there, there's truth to that. People believe that whatever politician that they vote for is going to push everything on their um, agenda ticket or ballot or whatever. And we know that during history, that's just not the case. They say what they got to say to get uh, in the office, and then um, they really just follow their um, pack investors, right? Big Pharma and all these other ones that are lying in their pockets. It says California might soon make some of the first steps in the country towards reparations for descendants of enslaved persons. That has everything to do with us being in Egypt. Mitzrayim, the land of bondage. Lawmakers know the stakes are high for their own state and the nation, but not everyone agrees on how to get there. So everyone is watching California, all of the states, right? Because they know however this domino falls is how the rest of the country more than likely is going to go. The state responded to protests and calls for racial justice in 2020 during the pandemic. And during the uh, Biden and Trump election with the reparations task force last year, that group came back with an over 1000 page report. Secretary of State Shirley Weber initiated that work. She told reporters <clears throat> when the report came out that she believes California can make moves that other states and even the federal government can't. Oh, can't. So California is going to make these moves that the government can't in a lot of other states, allegedly. This effort had been tried many times at the federal level, but because of the complexity of the politics of this nation and its resistance to any kind of change or activity with regards to so-called African-Americans, it had failed many times, she said. So you mean to tell me we can pay the people that we bombed in Hiroshima billions of dollars. Um, we can provide aid to the state, the Israeli state, billions of dollars every year for a Holocaust that had nothing to do with this nation. But the actual African and American Holocaust, we don't pay reparations to because of... Uh, the complexity of politics. But we're going, we're sending all this aid and money to all these nations that have nothing to do with us here. But I guess with those issues, it's not as complex, right? That's how they make it seem. The California Legislative Black Caucus released a list of priority bills based on the report back in January. Assembly member Corey Jackson is a member of the Black Caucus and says he's proud of how many of those bills succeeded. For the first time in the nation, we have a series of bills going to the governor's desk that provides reparations for African Americans, he said. So the, the so-called Black Caucus up there, they're happy about all the bills that got passed. So it's looking like there's going to be reparations, right? That we're finally going to get, you know, what we're owed. Because if California goes this way, then the other states are supposed to follow. 
Um, eight of 14 bills passed, so over half. One calls for the state to make uh, an official apology for its role in slavery. Another mandates it investigate claims of stolen property via eminent domain. So a public apology. I mean, that's cool. I mean, it should have been done. <laughs> it should have been been done. But then you have to be careful because when they put words in there like investigate, just because they investigate and that they find that it's true, excuse me, true, it doesn't mean that they're going to give you uh, the land back or the resources of that land or the pay for them stealing the land, right? So with that, you got to take this stuff with a grain of salt. I mean, it's good in theory, but hmm, we'll see if it comes to fruition. It says the bills touch on a lot of things, including education, health, and criminal justice. So it covers a, a large variety. Jackson said that said that might not be what people expect. The package doesn't include direct cash payments. So what kind of reparations is it if you don't pay the people? Like, I thought a workman was worthy of his hire. So all these, you know, grand gestures of an apology and investigate all these claims in eminent domain, but we're not going to give you uh, no, no money or no wealth or no resources, though. No, we'll investigate the things that we've done, that we, that we know, that you know that we've done. But we're not going to pay you for the wages for what your ancestors should have received. But again, we'll pay the state of Israel. Um, we'll send money to Ukraine. You know, we'll we'll provide all of this uh, alleged aid for for Africa, right? All these other nations, but the people inside it who are still coming out of these generational curses and bondage, we're not actually going to give you a dime of that. But we had eight out of fourteen bills passed, though. Just not anything that's going to help you to truly become your own set apart nation because that's what they fear and this is because of pride the spirit of pride <laughs> every time one of these bills come up every time another bill comes to where they're sending all this aid to other countries but can't even look you squarely in the face and give you a valid reason why you cannot receive uh your just due it's pride it, so the sin of this nation is not just the bloodshed. Now it's the pride. Won't, uh, even if they uh, acknowledge what they've done through an apology, that does not equate to uh, leveling the balances in the scales. Right? Because if they were to give us the wealth that uh, we deserve, we would not need them. And many of us would link up and set up our own systems to where we can live outside of their system. A lot of us, though, would just give all their money right back to them and be in the same situation. But they fear the percentage that would leave and that we could pull more people out of this system, coming out of her, right? But it is in line with the steps the task force laid out. Those are based on a United Nations legal framework and research on several reparations efforts from around the world. So the United Nations is behind it, which means that the United States is behind it. The first one is to acknowledge that a harm has been done. The second is to apologize for that harm, he said. He says these bills put those ideas in motion, and that's a big win. But there is tension in what um, passed and what didn't. So they still see this as a as a monumental win. The slave mentality. <laughs> it's not a win till we receive payment that we've been owed. It's not. But again, this nation has been engulfed with this spirit of pride. <laughs> and and they know it. And to be honest, they really can't. Because if they give us the money that we that uh that we're owed, that's just gonna uh, speed up or expedite the fall of this nation. Two bills that were introduced later failed at the last minute. One state bill, 1403, go look that up, 
would have established a new government department to carry out reparations laws and another Senate bill, 1331, also go check that out. So 1403 and 1331 will create a reparations fund, but not with money from the state. So the state, even though they would acknowledge and apologize, they still wouldn't put any money towards this fund. When Even though it was the federal and the state governments that allowed these things to occur to us. So these two bills got shot down, right? Man, <laughs> Jackson said that although those steps are in the report, the caucus wanted to move more gradually. State Senator Stephen Bradford is also a member of the Black Caucus and one of two lawmakers who used or who served on the task force. He sponsored both bills. I think they were critically important to the overall movement of reparations and being able to do something concrete right now he said so but that's still just an apology and acknowledging what they did to us looking into eminent domain nothing actually in your hands or in your bank account that can truly help you the bills enjoyed uh, broad support and votes on the state and senate assembly floors the entire black caucus even co-sponsored one SB uh, Senate Bill 1403, but both were pulled on the last night of the legislative session because they were more likely told that they weren't going to pass. Caucus members have given various explanations as to why. Caucus Chair Lori Wilson told reporters that evening that the bills weren't ready and added that the funding for them, especially the new department, wasn't there, considering it's a tight year for the state budget. There's always an excuse. But they could find all these billions of dollars to pay for uh, certain medicines during a pandemic. Let's put it that way. Right? Pride. Bradford said Governor Gavin Newsom's office approached the caucus with amendments to Senate Bill 1403 in the last week of the session. The government's team refused to comment on the bills or confirm that it had suggested any changes. Pride. Pride. Because they don't want to pay you nothing. They don't feel like they, they owe you anything. A few dozen protesters, largely from reparations, advocacy groups gathered to protest in the rotunda of the Capitol as the bills were scrapped. Their voices carried to the assembly floor throughout the night, though they were not allowed into the gallery. So we're always so now we're in the outer courts when we're supposed to always be in the inner courts, right? We're in the outer gallery, right? Because everything's been flipped on its head. Right? The head has become the tail, the tail's become the head. Again Everything about this fall is, is going to be because of you and because of the spirit of pride. Um, that's why it's important since we were raised in this system in literally raised in the belly of the beast that you purge yourself before the purge comes because the purge is near. We're coming to the Feast of Trumpets and then the Day of Atonement. Purging. This is a, is a time of cleaning your hearts, cleaning your minds. This is a time of reflection from the secret things um, that's holding you back, keeping you in bondage. And that's something that only you know. That's something that only you can be freed of through your prayer, through your supplication, through your submission. Because again, pride is the reason why we are in this estate. Pride. So we're talking about pride. So what is pride? Let's look at a few different definitions of uh, what pride is. Some of the, uh, the different websites and dictionaries I was going into, the first literal definition of pride was talking about the LGBTQ. And we know we're not... that That is a sin according to the Most High. But... 
the main sin, sin of pride on this nation has to do with us not doing right by us and because we were raised in that we don't know how to do right by ourselves and we don't know how to do right by our own people we don't know how to love properly we don't know how to love ourselves because uh, as the saying goes broken people break people so you have to break yourself you have to have that broken and contrite heart right to be able to receive the salvation that got all your kinsmen redeemer that's coming you have to no one else can do it for you your mama's prayers can't do it for you your daddy's prayers can't do it for you no prophecies that that people have had about you uh can do it for you this is work that you have to do no one can motivate you to do it again no one can make you do it you have to want to do it you have to do that so pride it's a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired so you're happy about uh, the things or the possessions that you have the things you've done uh, that are widely admired you're not seeking a, a admiration from the most high it's what they like to call now especially in this age of information of technology of social media self gratification that's really pride it's idolatry idolatry is really pride um, believing in something else because a lot of times we lift ourselves up and we become the idol so you got to make sure the idol was not in your name Billy right you got to make sure that you're separating yourself and you're giving your creator the praise the honor and the glory that he deserves because it's not, really not about you even though you're player one in your life you're still um, a backup player or you're still a supporting role character in the overarching uh, life of humanity through Mashiach because all of these things all of the feast days point you to Mashiach point you to his blood to his sacrifice what he's done for you so that you can attain glory and honor and gratification from your father who is in the Shamayin or heaven um, another definition says a high or or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority American judges lawmakers politicians people in power elite white supremacy whether it's cherished in the mind or as displayed in bearing conduct so these are the definitions of pride and these are sins that are literally before the Most High when it comes to the nation uh, of America, of North America, the so-called United States, when we know that this nation is not, or these nations are not united. That's why they will fall, because they are divided. This house was not built on a rock. That word inordinate means unusually or disproportionately large and excessive so this opinion that you have of yourself is really narcissism that's what this country has on it because you talk to people and they don't think that this nation can fall because our, our navy's too great our soldiers are too good uh you know our technology is too advanced nothing can can do anything to the mighty mystery babylon right nothing that's why this place is going to fall because of the uh, prevailing spirit of pride right now let's look at the Hebrew word for pride right it's gaon it means pride excellency majesty pomp swelling arrogancy we live in the most arrogant nation on earth They were able to win all these wars and um, we don't even realize that we were there fighting or creating the things that allowed them or they were using us slaves to carry messages so they can win the wars. 
Well, we don't get no credit. We can't even get reparations. It's the spirit of pride. And don't worry, because the Most High has their number. Because this country's days are numbered. Now, let's look into what the scripture says about pride. So, pride is used 49 times in 46 verses. And it is never good. Scriptures be talking about how he's going to break the pride. <laughs> break the pride. But it's used 49 times in 46 verses. So let's go to one. And this is just in the quote unquote 66 books. We go to Job 41 verse 34. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. What happens is you start feeling yourself so much as a man, as a family, as a race of people, and as a nation of people that you forget that there is one power that's ruling over the children of pride, and that's Yahuwah. That's the Most High. America has become so haughty and so lofted up that they really think that they can be like the Most High and they will fall. And it, it is falling even now because the spirit of pride, because they have not loved and taken care of the Most High's hidden ones, of his little ones. They have not loved the Most High's children, right? This nation will fall and it will not be pretty. It will not be pretty. Let's go to another one. We're going to go to Psalms 10, verse 2, and then we're going to go to verse 4. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. All of these plans, all of these eugenics, all of these euphemisms through uh, quote unquote uh, vaccines, oh, fair use this is for educational and training purposes, right? All of these plans that they've imagined for our future, right? It's going to end up happening to them and to their children for their wickedness. Now, with me saying that, that's not every one of them because there's still righteousness in, in, a, in a lot of them. But the powers that should not be, that rule, and that have these wicked devices planned for us, they're going to fall and they're going to get it the worst. Scriptures talk about how we are, we are never allowed to, uh, to allow them to fill the face of the earth with cities. Literally, this is the wickedness that we've been dealing with. And their time is up. Because our time is now. Bars. Uh, let's go to, like I said, verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance uh, will not seek after the Most High. The Most High is not in all his thoughts. Because that's what happens in America because we're so busy. And it's so much busyness. There's all these other important things that we have to do instead of taking care of our physical man and our spiritual man. Instead of purging our hearts, right? Rending our hearts and not our garments. Because you don't understand when you're in, engulfed in the spirit of pride, you don't even um, under or overstand what you're wearing. Because remember, the Most High is the king of the children of pride. Because can nobody be more prideful than the Most High? proud and no one can be more jealous uh, than the most high just like no one can be more loving and forgiving than the most high because he's always ready to save but because these people gave us and showed us no mercy because he would have healed her and because they would not give us justice they won't receive mercy they're not going to receive justice just make sure that you're not a partaker in her plagues or her sins. Make sure you have separated yourself. That's what the Feast of Trumpets is about. Because when the last trump sounds, there will be a, a division, a separation. There will be a great slaughter, and then so there will be a lot of dead bodies, and then those that survived. There's only going to be two types of people in that day the, the survivors and the dead. Which one are you going to be? Are you going to uh, purge yourself now? Because the whole concept of the purge was to give people, what, a 24-hour period to do all manner of wickedness and killing and, and, and robbing and everything. 
uh, to, to pacify everybody, right? Um, and then you would do that once a year, right? And that was supposed to bring the criminality down. Well, before the true criminality or before the true slaughter happens, purge yourself. Mortify your members. Again, rend your uh, garment, your heart and not your garments. Because you don't, I'm telling you, people are going just going to die for all the things that's coming. Because if you're not aware, this thing is so wicked. We are literally living in the age uh, of fallen angel intelligence, what they like to call artificial intelligence. This is the age of the Terminators. They're building robotic robot dogs, robotic robots, uh, cops, and everything. All these vehicles that they're trying to switch to electric so they can uh, make them all be remote controlled because they think that, that they can be God. And I'm telling y'all, this stuff is so dangerous because this AI has become a sentient being with its own thoughts, plans, and imaginations. Right? I'm telling you, this is the time to purge. This is the time to heal and to be healed from generational curses. Because the generational curses is exactly what was happening to the children of Israel when they were trying to leave Egypt. They had been in bondage for probably about 100, 115 or 144 to 215 years. That's why when any type of adversity came at them, they just wanted to stay. You know, they wanted to go back because they wanted to eat meat and leeks and melons and all this other stuff, right? In flesh. Instead of being reborn in purging their hearts. Making it to the wilderness is not the time to purge your hearts. You got to start purging your heart now. Again, we're coming into the Feast of Trumpets and then the Day of Atonement, which leads to the Feast of Tabernacles. When the Most High tabernacles with men, right? When he's there, and then it will only be righteousness, or you will be cut off. You'll be thrust through. People are still playing and lollygagging and are not preparing for the things that are coming upon the earth. It's going to get bad. There's too many people that I know who... <laughs> Uh, they are having dreams, visions, prophecies about what's coming. And it's not going to be for the faint at heart. Because the word miracle, uh, what we were talking about last time, literally uh, how you would say it in Eng English is mo faith. So you better be making sure that you have mo faith now. You better be building up and strengthening your faith muscle now. And make sure that the seed of pride, the seed of wickedness has not taken hold and root in you. And if it has, well, it's time for you to uproot it. It's that time. The Day of Atonement, right? Looking forward, the Day of Atonement is the one day that you can have every sin that you've done purged, forgiven, right? It's the one day... Uh, that the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, right, uh, for the remission of sins. Because we know that our Passover lamb, he is our atonement. But these things are supposed to get you prepared. They're supposed to get your heart prepared for what's coming. So that you only rely and depend on the Most High. Not a politician, not a state legislation, not a black caucus. Not a, a pastor, a preacher, or a president. The Most High. Have faith in His holy name. Let's look at another scripture. Psalm 73 and verse 6. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. So pride is what puts you in bondage. Gets you behind bars. Well, I'm just going to rob them for what they got. Oh, I'm just going to rape this woman. Oh, I'm just going to kidnap this little boy or this little girl. And it literally becomes a garment on you. That's why when scriptures talk about you uh, having strange apparel, 
you don't even be realizing when you in these different types of sins and iniquities, you're wearing different garments. You're wearing the armor of Baal, right? You're not wearing the armor of Yahuwah. You're not wearing the armor of the Most High. It's faulty. And you stick out to the Most High like a sore thumb. And in the times that's coming, you don't want to have those garments on. So the purge is near. It's even inside of you. Let your lips speak righteousness. Give the Most High a joyful noise. Right? Praise Him. Thank Him for His goodness. Because He created us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. It's not about the things that you do. But it's about what Mashiach did for you. When He died as the curse on the tree when he took our iniquities and our sins and our sicknesses and diseases that's what this whole thing's about the day of atonement all of these the feast of trumpets the feast of tabernacles uh passover feast of first fruits all of these things are about mashiach it's not about the righteousness of the law because moses has to be taught but mashiach is inside of you Mashiach is, the, is the, the power, the force that unlocks the kingdom of Shamaim, the kingdom of heaven. But you have to purge and you have to repent now for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because if you can't repent and you can't confess, you can't receive salvation. And if you, if you can't do any of these things, then you don't even know what the fear of Yahuwah is. You have no idea. So let's read it. So the fear of Yahuwah, according to Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. So when you have the spirit of pride, which is a chain of bondage around your neck, which leads you into violence so it becomes a garment on you the most high hates it so i'm gonna say this right now watch your mouth watch what you're saying in this hour watch how you're saying it to people watch the spirit that's on you and make sure it's not a spirit of pride and arrogancy be very careful with the words that are proceeding out of your mouth it could literally be the difference for you between life and death. So let's go over a few more. Proverbs 11 verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So for those of us that still have not received our just desserts, our reparations, stay humble. Just stay humble. Purge yourself now before the purge comes. Because when this purge comes to America with all the Haitians, with all the Chinese, with all the Russians and all of these military age men and all these places that are just letting loose their gang members, letting loose their, their prisoners. <clears throat> when it comes here and the purge is here, you want to be protected. So make sure that your garments have been made white through the blood of Mashiach. If you don't take anything else out from what I'm saying... It's all about the blood of Mashiach. <clears throat> it's not about the 613 laws, but don't get me wrong. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But if you don't have mo faith or faith in what Mashiach did for you uh, as your day of atonement every day, not just one day of the year. Right. Because I was talking to uh, my Ema, my mama, and she was just like, you got to think from the beginning of time. When the first Adam fell, when we were born into this uh, fallen estate, right? This fallen uh, world. When Mashiach died on that stake or on that tree, it was for everyone that cleaves to the covenant and that are awakened to the knowledge of the truth of the Most High. But can you hold on? Can you endure into the end uh, so that you can be saved? Because in your patience... In your mo faith, you possess your soul. It is imperative that you wait on the Most High and be humble. 
Because just like when we left in Egypt, he gave us a time period to where we were able to spoil them, as to borrow and spoil them. And I'm telling you, the things that are on the other side of the destruction of this nation and this system is going to be far greater than what any of us can ever imagine. But who can hear that and understand it? Who can see it? Right? Because the kingdom of heaven is not without uh, is not with observation, right? It happens in the spiritual realm first. Nation just falling every which way. Supply chain, you know, people getting divided in politics, you know, people getting divided over the jab situation, uh, people getting divided over the immigration. Do y'all not see that we're at uh, the gate of war, of a world war? That mainly has to do with us and then Africa because they know that the, everything has to shift back to the, the quote unquote motherland. That's why now the United States all of a sudden agrees to uh, that they want uh, two African nations to have a seat at the actual permanent table now. Because they know the jig is up. They know it. Proverbs 13, verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention. But with the well-advised is wisdom. So we know how it is with narcissism and people that are narcissists in this rise in feminism. All of these isms, right, breeds contention. It disrupts harmony. And you know what? Especially when it comes to this nation, it's the Most High's will. It's the Most High's doing. We just have to make sure that we are purged, that we are pure, right, without spot and without blemish. Proverbs 14 verse 3 In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride But the lips of the wise shall preserve them Watch what you are saying Even further watch what you are thinking Be very mindful in this hour We're coming into a very spiritual time So be careful Guard your heart With all diligence Guard it the issues of life concern you. Proverbs, um, what's it, 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. That's how you know it's almost over. Because these Trumpers, the, these Trumpites, and these Camillaites, <laughs> prideful. Can't even admit when either one of them is right and either one of them is wrong. Because they have become their idols. Politicians and politics have become these people's God. Because as long as they keep the status quo as it is, they're good. And they ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Just like, yeah, we can admit the harm that we've done and we can give you an apology. But we can't, we can't possibly afford to pay y'all. No, we're too busy paying everybody else, giving these illegal immigrants housing, uh, credit cards, getting approved for housing uh, loans for them to get homes, uh, <laughs> arresting them and then just letting them go no matter what crime they've committed, allowing all the Chinese to come and uh, set up shop at all of, around all of our nuclear facilities, farms, ammunition plants, pride. Pride comes uh, before destruction. And this nation is halty. Proverbs 29 verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. This hour, this time, this season is all about humility. Submission humbling yourselves because in the grand scheme of things it's not about you if you are if you have a wife and children it's not about you it's not but you're the one thing that is about you is about salvation and you better hold on to it because the plans that they have they don't want no one to believe nothing but the the other light of Lucifer right which just means light bringer 
of the fallen. Let's go to Leviticus 26. So, anyone who's read the script knows that Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it talks about the blessings and the curses. But Leviticus 26 literally talks about pride. Got on. Verse 13. I am Yahuwah, your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, that you should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. That's what's going to happen. We're going to have to go upright. But if you will not hearken unto me, and eventually we're going to talk about uh, these next few verses, but not today, and will not do all these commandments, if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, that you break my covenant, that's what the Most High says, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So just like these things happen to us and there's people pretending to be us and all throughout the world, these curses are going to come on them. But can you stay faithful? Can you confess it? Can you purge it? Can you truly repent, which means to turn away from it? That's the test. That is the test of your life. Verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. That's why we can't get reparations. And you shall flee when none pursue you. And if you will not let, uh, not yet for all this hearken unto me, right? So you get slain by your enemies. You get, you get become ruled by uh, those that hate you. And you run when no one pursues you, right? And if you will not hearken, uh, not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. This is what's going to happen to them. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your brass as, and your earth as brass. So in other words, I will take your liberty and make you a slave, make you a prisoner or a bondman. So he said that he was going to break the pride of our power because he knew that we were a stubborn and stiff-necked people. Right? And now this is what's going to happen to the nations. And it's going to happen to a lot of us too because a lot of us are still stubborn and stiff-necked. Now... It's kind of crazy because there's actually a strange connection. So with this movie, right, I used to watch it all the time. My mama, she loves, uh, you know, old school movies. I kind of love them too. But I used to always wonder, The Wizard of Oz, what does Oz mean, right? What does Oz mean? Oz, strength, strong, power. So the most I literally said, I will break the pride got on of your Oz. So the Wizard of Oz is the Wizard of Power. But that was a different alleged power. And it wasn't really power. It was sorcery. It was uh, deception. Right? So make sure that you're not falling for the Wizard of Oz or for the deceptions that's out there. Getting you to worship other guys. Getting you to worship your ancestors. Getting you to uh, make uh, altars to, to, to fallen idols. Right, getting you to forsake your covenant, getting you to forsake your nahala. This is all about your inheritance. Do not forsake it. Don't fall for the wizard of Oz. Don't fall for Hollywood. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the witchcraft. The wizard of Oz, the wizard of power. And we know that he had no power. Right? <laughs> That's why you have to follow the money, is what that movie was trying to tell you. Follow the money and you'll figure out who's really running things. The bloodlines, right? The international monetary funds and all, right? Now let's let's finish this. We can go to Ecclesiasticus 10, one of the books that were taken out. It's also known as Syrac. 
Because this is all about pride. It's all about pride. And it's crazy because, again, I was going to continue, um, like I said, with the similarities with Moses and the Egyptians and everything. And they just kind of, I was just asking, like, what is it that we need now? What is it that we need to hear? What are the words that are going to help us to endure, that are going to help us to refocus on you, that are going to help us to be able to uh, sustain and to occupy until you come? And then it was just like pride. Pride. So with me even saying this, it's not just about y'all purging from pride. It's me also. There's things I have to, I've got to work on. There's things that I have to grow on. There's things that I have to overcome. But I know that I'm more than a conqueror. For greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. And he's already overcame the grave. That's the Oz. That's the power that we must trust in. That is the only source that we should be trusting in the Most High. Not the Wizard of Oz. Not these other powers. From fallen angel intelligence. Verse 1. A wise magistrate educates his people. And the rule of an intelligent person is well ordered. As the people's judge is, so are his officials. As the ruler of the city is, so are all its inhabitants. So that means that for a long time, America has been ruled by fools. Because if you notice, with each passing election and with these newer generations, the education system is dumbing everything down. People are getting dumber, um, slower. Um, just want to depend completely on technology. Y'all, some a lot of people are going to be those ones that are going to literally have smart houses, and you're going to be living in 1984, which eventually we'll, we will talk about. You'll be living in 1984. An undisciplined king ruins his people, but a city becomes fit to live in through the understanding of its rulers. The government of the earth is in the hand of Yahuwah, and over it he will raise up the right leader for the time. So, now listen to what that said. The government of the earth is in the hand of Yahuwah, and over it he will raise up the right leader for the time. But, and the right leader for the, the time is has two different scenarios. The right leader for the time to keep you in peace and, and living great, and the right leader for the time of the fall. Because that's the time and the season that we're in. Human success is in the hand of Yahuwah. And it is he who confers honor upon the lawgiver. So it's not about self-gratification. It's about getting the honor from the Most High. It's not about being like Esau, Edom, seeking uh, or through, uh, in, was it, inveigled through the hearts of man, trying to steal the hearts of man. It's not about that. It's about having the, the honor from the Most High. Because other men and women can praise you. But don't think nothing of it. You give praise to the Most High. For He is good and His mercy endures forever. Do not get angry with your neighbor for every injury. And do not resort to acts of insolence. So, you know, every now and then don't just, you know... Um, Eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Have mercy. Again, that's one of the things that America has not had on um, the slaves. Because even though you can be a multimillionaire, you're playing all these different sports, you are a rich slave. You see what they just did to Tyreek Hill. You see what they did to Kyrie Irving. Rich slaves. Buck dancing. Buck dancing. Uh... <laughs> and there's always an embarrassment ritual before you get um, before you can ascend according to them so if y'all are not aware what just happened with Shannon Sharp that was an embarrassment ritual because he should have got fired behind that right that's what they did to Paul Pierce and Paul Pierce's stuff wasn't even nowhere near close to that and he got to actually promote the the, the pills that he takes to increase his sex drive the stuff is wild 
it's everything's about sex, uh, depravity, and pride here. That's why it's got to fall. It has to. Arrogance is hateful to Yahuwah and to mortals. And injustice is outrageous to both. So if injustice is outrageous to both us and the Most High, what do you think is going to happen to this nation? And to the people that will not stop pretending to be us, to the people that will not give us what we um, are owed. What do you think is going to happen? Because those who killed by the sword must be killed by the sword. The only way to purge blood is the blood of that person and their descendants has got to be purged. So this lesson is to everyone. Purge your heart so you are not partakers of the plagues of the sins uh, and of the, the great calamity and destruction that's coming upon this nation. It's coming. Sovereignty passes from nation to nation on account of injustice and insolence and wealth. So that's what ends up dethroning people, tearing down nations. I didn't catch that when I was reading that earlier. Sovereignty passes from nation to nation because of injustice and insolence and wealth by not giving the people what they deserve. That's what makes nations rise and fall. Injustice. So you know it's up. When it comes to this nation and the Most High with his children here, you know it's up. It's up and it's stuck, as they say. How can dust and ashes be proud? Even a life, the human body is infested with worms. A long illness mocks the physician. The king of today will die tomorrow, right? For when humans die, they inherit maggots and vermin and worms. The beginning of human pride is to forsake Yahuwah. The heart has withdrawn from its maker. The beginning of human pride is to forget forsake don't trust in don't depend on the most high make excuses for why you're not repent before the kingdom of heaven is near it's nigh purge your hearts remember who you are remember the covenant with abraham and with isaac and with jacob and with you re-implement re-institute the covenant. Resign the covenant with the Most High. Prepare for trumpets. Prepare for the Day of Atonement. Prepare your hearts, people. For the beginning of pride is sin. And the one who clings to it pours out abominations. So that, that was the beginning of human pride was to forsake the Most High. So when you willfully break commandments, when you willfully eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, even though you know better, that is the be that is pride, right? That is the beginning of it. And then we've learned it. It is also sin, right? To forsake, to forget, to not depend on and lean on the Most High, the Creator of all things. That is pride. Check your hearts. It's a heart check. Therefore, Yahuwah brought upon them unheard of calamities. So therefore Yahuwah brought upon them unheard of calamities and destroyed them completely. Because that's what's going to happen here. America is going to get hit from everywhere to where you're not going to know up from down, left from right. You're not going to be even able to really trust neighbors. That's why you better know who your tribe is. And you better be talking, planning, prepping for the things that's coming. So you know the family of the body of Mashiach that you can trust. Because unheard of calamities is coming to this nation. Unheard of. Yahuwah overthrew the thrones of rulers and enthroned the lowly in their place. Yahuwah plucked up the roots of the nations and planted the humble in their place. So that's what's going to happen. He's going to pluck up all of these uh different nations that is in a that make up America 
and he's going to pluck us back where we belong. And everyone that survives is going to go to the nations where they're supposed to be at, to the countries where they're supposed to be at. But this is Yahuwah's doing. And again, this has everything to do with the spirit of pride, the beginning of sin, right? Which is forsaking the commandments, the word, and the faith of the Mosai. And then especially uh, forsaking Mashiach. Because he is your kinsman redeemer. Verse 16. Yahuwah laid waste the lands of the nations and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He removed some of them and destroyed them and erased the memory of them from the earth. That's what's going to happen. People are going to get blotted out to where you don't even mention it. Don't mention their name. Pride was not created for human beings or violent anger for those born of women. And in this nation, there is more violent anger, right? Because we know in Chi-Town and St. Louis and all these other places, but it came from the mentality of the slave masters. So you got to think, these people just want to stay in war, in everybody's war. You know, want to be providing aid in this one, fighting war here, always in war, always in states of chaos and panic. But it was not created for man with this. This pride was not. Neither was his violent anger. And um, this uh, control freak syndrome, right? So pride was not created for human beings or violent anger for those born of women. Those whose offspring are worthy of honor. So whose offspring are worthy of honor? Human offspring. Who of the human offspring is worthy of honor? Because we know pride comes before destruction, haughty spirit in the fall. So there's going to be two manners of men. Because I talked to you about those that survive and those that are dead. Right? But another way to put it is those that are in honor and those that are in dishonor. Right? Honor and dishonor. So whose offspring are worthy of honor? Human offspring. Whose offspring are worthy of honor? Those who fear Yahuwah. Those that do not forsake his word. Those that hold tight to his word and his commandments and his love and his Mashiach. Right? Those that know that he is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man a man that he should repent. Those that over and understand that his word is cannot return unto him void. Those are the ones that fear you who are right, whose offspring are unworthy of honor. Human offspring. So human offspring is worthy of honor and human offspring is unworthy of honor. Whose offspring are unworthy of honor? Those who break the commandments, the Torah, the word, the truth, the light in your life. Literally. So again, human offspring or man is worthy of honor and worthy of or unworthy of honor or of dishonor. Right? Among family members, their leader is worthy of honor. But those who, who fear Yahuwah are worthy of honor in his eyes. So you better be seeking the most high's honor. And not just the honor of mom and them, your children, cousins uncles, aunties, them. You better be seeking the Most High's honor because that's the one that counts. Again, this is the test of your life. This is the test of your life, family. This is the test of your life, tribe. Verse 22. The guest and the stranger and the poor, their boast is in the fear of Yahuwah because they're humble. They are the meek of the earth it is not right to despise one who is intelligent but poor and it is not proper to honor one who is sinful so be balanced in everything don't judge based off of appearances the prince and the judge and the ruler are honored but none of them is greater than the one who fears Yahuwah so don't be a respecter of persons don't be respecting people's title and people's positions right Judge righteous judgment. Free people will serve a wise 
slave. And an intelligent person will not complain. Now listen, free people will serve a wise slave because we're all slaves. It's slavery under another name. And an intelligent person will not complain. You better be intelligent when the Most High, he, when he sent you a wise slave. You better have the spirit of discernment. You better not throw them away because they're they're not as articulate as, a, as, as others. Because they don't wear, you know, the, the best clothes as other people. You better be judging the heart. Judging those that are purging and purifying their hearts. Do not make a display of your wisdom when you do your work. And do not extol yourself when you are in difficulty. Right? Do not hey. do these things. I'll get it. As we, as we finish up. Better those who work and have plenty than those who boast and lack bread. My child, honor yourself with humility and give yourself the esteem you deserve. So give yourself the esteem, but don't esteem yourself too highly. Who will acquit those who condemn themselves? And who will honor those who dishonor themselves? Only a fool. The poor are honored for their knowledge, while the rich are honored for their wealth. One who is honored in poverty, how much more in wealth? And one dishonored in wealth, how much more in poverty? Judge righteous judgment. The purge is near. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Purge yourself before the purge is here. Purge yourself before he purges you. Purge. So, Father, we thank you for your word, which endure forever, Father. Uh, we just ask for you to forgive us of all of our sins and sins of our ancestors. Thank you for this word today, this on time, Father. Thank you for strengthening our, our faith and giving us more faith, Father. Um, we thank you, Father, for protecting us and keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We ask for you to heal all of our members, Father, all those that cry out to you and cleave to your covenant, Father. And we just thank you for this gift of life. We do not take it for granted, Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for another day above ground. Thank you for our homes, our cars, our vehicles, our, our, our jobs, Father. Thank you for our families, our loved ones, our friends, even our enemies that, that get to teach us a lesson in how to stay humble and how to operate. Help us to be engulfed and wear the garments of humility and meekness, Father. And remove the seed the roots of pride in our eyes, in our ears, and in our lives, Father. All these things we do ask and pray in the name of your beloved Son, Yahushua Hamashiach, Amen. So, we are Yehuda. This is Yah's assembly. Um, also, again, we're having uh, the Feast of Trumpets on Tuesday. I believe that's the 17th. We plan to start at 6. Um, hopefully see y'all tuned in. Um, Man, we just want to thank all of y'all. I know I um, haven't been able to go live as much as I would like to. Been going through some things, but um, Yahuwah is greater. Um, healing our family, healing our loved ones, blessing us in different situations, man. So we're grateful. So again, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and share our content, man. And as always, until next time, peace, family. Whoa!